This is a Woodside Church Sunday. Welcome to another Woodside Online, everyone. If I haven't met you before, my name's Anna and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how this is going to work today. So first, we will have a time of worship followed by the preach that was recorded last Sunday. But before we do all of that, I'm going to share a little bit of news with you. So first up, a little update on our prayer meetings. We are going to be pausing our weekend in-person meetings over the summer. So that is our site-specific meetings and what we've called the whole church prayer meeting that has been happening on a Saturday. So these will not be happening over summer, but we will update you in August about how we're going to be joining together in prayer as one church from September. Now, our weekday meetings will still be happening, as will the 24 prayer chain. So you can still attend those if you wish. Also, on Sunday, the 14th of August, we are going to be having our church picnic. This time it is going to be over in Great Denham at the playground and park. And you can check the link that is on the screen now for more details, including the postcode. It will be straight after the Sunday services. So we'll have games and bring your own food. And yeah, I can't wait to see you there. Hopefully we'll have some sunshine too.
Good morning, everybody. Um, if we haven't met, my name's Debbie. Pleasure to be with you. Um, as Luke said, we're starting a new preaching series this morning. It's our summer series. It's on the Lord's Prayer. Um, I don't know if we've got the... Ta-da! I am really excited about this, guys. The Lord's Prayer is a prayer that many of us know by heart. It's a prayer that some of you will have prayed in your schools, maybe, growing up. So many of you will have prayed at home, around the dinner table, or at night. It's a prayer that is globally known. It's known by people who don't know our God, but they know this prayer. And that's really exciting in lots of ways. It's kind of penetrated society. But in other ways, it means it suffers from the same situation as my friend's fire alarm does. So. Our friends, I promise that makes sense, Um, our friends Ben and Deb, they live in London. We went to visit them a while ago, and I was talking to them in their um, living room, and I kept hearing this noise in the background, this beep, beep, every so often. And I said to them, guys, what is that noise? And they were like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, okay. (laughs) Carried on talking, and I'd be like, then, then, did you hear it? And they were like, no. And you start to think, am I making this up. I know I'm not making this up. So I went on a hunt around their house. I mean, they're in London. It's not that big. It didn't take long. But I found this fire alarm sitting at the bottom of their stairs on a unit, beeping. And I said to them, guys, it's this. And they went, oh, yeah. Like a while ago, we had a a burst pipe upstairs. Water ran through the ceiling. It got into the fire alarm. And it's beeped ever since. But we just don't hear it anymore. We're just so used to it. And I remember thinking, that's probably not okay. Like, I feel like you should really be aware of when a fire alarm makes a noise. (laughs) Really concerned me somewhat. But I think we have the same issue with the Lord's Prayer, don't we, sometimes? We have got so used to hearing it that we have forgotten to treasure it. It is a gift that was given to us by Jesus to enable us to enter into prayer. And we've just, it's become background noise to us. And that's why I'm so excited that we're doing this series each week. One of the preachers is going to unpack a part of the Lord's Prayer for us and teach us again how to treasure it. Um, And this morning, we're going to look at the verses that lead in to the Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to try and answer three questions for us. I'm going to answer why pray, how do we pray, and what should we pray? So we'll start. We're in Matthew for the Lord's Prayer for this series, and we are reading from chapter 6, verses 5 to 8. It should come on the screen behind me if you want to pray this with me. So whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, because they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your private room, shut your door, and pray to your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles, since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them because your father knows the things you need before you ask him. Okay. Interestingly, this verse starts with an assumption. It starts with whenever you pray. Jesus is clear that prayer will happen in a Christian life. We should be praying. And I think we can all agree to that assumption that we all pray. I mean, hopefully we, we all pray. But I mean, globally, we all pray. People who don't know God, who have a different faith or no faith, they pray. Um, There is a Taylor Swift song. You're going to be really impressed with the range of quotes you get this morning, by the way. Um, But it's a Taylor Swift song that she wrote about her mother's cancer battle. And in it, she has a line that says, um, they say, desperate men find faith, so now I pray to Jesus too. But it isn't just the desperate that pray. You find prayer in hospital, of course you do, but... Everybody prays. You find me a parent who, when holding their newborn child, inside them a silent prayer of thank you, hasn't risen up for the safe arrival of that baby. Or an astronaut, when they have the opportunity to view the world from an angle that is normally reserved for God, hasn't said, wow, to a creator they maybe don't know. Every day, either out loud or quietly within their souls, people pray simple prayers of wow and thank you and help me and please this time let it work. The uh, 
Jewish theologian Abraham Joshua Heskell, so slightly different to Taylor Swift, said this quote, I think we've got this one, um, prayer is our humble answer to the inconceivable surprise of living. I'll read it again. Prayer is our humble answer to the inconceivable surprise of living. What Heskell is saying is that we are confronted by God, by his goodness, his saving grace, his holiness, his love, at every turn, just in the pure state of living, of being. And that the only answer that our hearts and our soul know to that is to pray. Being in prayer is the natural state of being for each of us because it is being in conversation with our Father. And this is our first answer to our first question of why pray? Why pray? Because we were made to. And I know it's not always easy to pray, but we have to be intentional about creating a habit. It takes work. Um, In verse 6 of the verses we read, it said, but when you go pray, go into your private room, shut your door, and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. I love in the Bible when everyday kind of secular things become sacred. I love when a bush is a light with the presence of the Lord. I love when a mountaintop has the presence of the Lord settling on it as a cloud. I love when a tent becomes a home for our God. And we have these sacred moments, these sacred places in our lives if we choose to have them. I have one at home. I've got a photo of my sacred place. There it is. My sofa, you can see it's not free of the realities of my life. There are toys in the corner there. <laughs> and I think that might be some folded washing on the left. Um, but it is, it's where I meet with God. If I want to go and pray, if I want to spend time with God at the end of the day, and to be honest with you, in the last few weeks when I have wanted to go and sit and pray the Lord's Prayer, that's where I've been sat, looking out at my garden in the sacred spot where God meets with me. There is grace for what this looks like in each of our lives. Not everybody has a space in their home that is quiet and private. I can go in there and shut the door. And some of the time, my children won't come in. (laughs) Some of the time, they will. But not all of us have that space, and I get that. And not all of us have that time. You know, I remember hearing about people who get up and they have two-hour quiet times in the morning. And I remember thinking, well, lovely, but the second there is a footstep of noise in my house, my youngest child will go, Mummy? And that's it. That's, that's my time gone with my morning. That's the reality. Um, but there is time. We find time for the things we love. That's the truth, guys. And whether that for you is a half-hour commute in your car between dropping your kid at nursery and getting to work, or at the end of the day on the drive to see you know, an, an, an aging parent, or whether it's a lunch break where you say, I am going to take this time to go on a prayer walk with my God. There is time in our lives to set aside, to meet with God, and I would challenge you to do it. My children beg at the end of the day for one more story, one more cuddle, one more song, one more minute of my time. And you know what? We should be begging God for one more minute of his time. And the more you enter into regular prayer, the more your heart will beg for more regular prayer. The psalmist puts it, my soul thirsts, even faints for the Lord. Better is one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. Like, isn't that how we feel when we've said these moments of praise like we've had this morning? Our hearts are so full, we're desperate for God. And I tell you now, if you start praying regularly, carving that time out, your heart will be desperate for God because prayer is what you were made to do. So first, we pray because we were made to. Second reason to pray, because Jesus did. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I'm better at being a Christian than Jesus was. So (laughs) we know we are called to imitate Christ, to be Christ-like in our lives. And Jesus prayed. When he was baptized, he prayed. Luke 3.21, now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus was also baptized and was praying, the heavens opened. He prayed after he fed the 5,000, Mark 6.46. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up to the mountain to pray. When he chose the 12 disciples in Luke 6, in these days he went out to the mountain to pray and all night he continued in prayer. Before he taught the people, he prayed in Mark 1, 35. And rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. In Gethsemane, when he was faced with his death, he prayed. Matthew 26, 36, and Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. 
And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And before he gave us the Lord's Prayer, he prayed. In Luke 11, verse 1, now Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. The whole of the story of Jesus and his life is peppered with prayer. He knew his dependency on God. He knew the need to be in regular conversation with the Father, to know the will of the Father and do the will of the Father. We have to be talking to our Father. And so we pray because Jesus did. And thirdly, we pray because we are invited to partner with God through prayer. I mean, isn't that amazing? God doesn't need us to do any of the things that he does, but he invites us to partner with him through prayer. In the verses we read, he says, don't babble because your father knows the things you need before you ask him. He knows what we need, but he still wants us to come to him in prayer with those things. When I'm cooking dinner sometimes, my girls will come up to me and they'll say, mommy, can we, can we help? I'm about to drink out the wrong side of a cup. And if we're honest, inviting them to help me cook dinner does not make cooking dinner easier. It does not make cooking dinner quicker. And it does not make the outcome better. Let's, that is the fact of cooking dinner with children. But I do it because I think this is an opportunity for them to spend time with me and me to spend time with them. And in doing this, they learn. And that is the grace God has for us. Our prayers do not make anything happen that God hasn't intended to have happen. We get to wrestle with him in prayer. We get to come to him in prayer. But really what is happening is he's inviting us to partner with him in prayer. We get to say, God, I want this. Help me. Help my heart be aligned with your heart. And God says, yeah, come child and spend time with me. So those are my three reasons why we pray, because we were made to, because Jesus did, and because we were invited to partner with God. So how to pray. I've got three ones for that as well. I'm learning. You press mine. Three and three. Um, so our reasons for, sorry, no, our how to pray are pray simple, keep it simple, um, keep it honest, and do it together. So number one, simple. Justin Welby said, the Lord's Prayer is simple enough to be memorized by small children and yet profound enough to sustain a lifetime of prayer. I love that. Simple enough to be memorized by small children and yet profound enough to sustain a lifetime of prayer. In its original language, the Lord's Prayer was just 32 words long and it rhymed. Jesus gave us a poem. Again, we just read, when you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles, since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. And Jesus said this to his disciples, and then he gave them a simple prayer. He told them, keep it simple, and then he demonstrated keeping it simple. Remember that prayer is not a performance piece. No one is marking your prayers. Your loving creator is simply waiting for you to enter into conversation with him. So keep it simple. And in doing so, you naturally leave space for God to respond. Learn to be okay with sitting in silence and stillness. It's something, particularly I think my generation, we have to practice. We're not used to being still. We're so demanded on by the things around us. And if you set aside 20 minutes, say, for prayer, and after 10 you've said everything you wanted to say to God, then don't fill that gap and don't run away from it. Stay in that moment. Allow him to speak to you. Maybe he'll stir your heart for other things to pray for, or maybe he'll just minister to you in that stillness. But yeah, keep your prayers simple. And secondly, keep your prayer honest. Prayer is not about performance. It is a sacred moment. Jesus made this clear in the verses we read. He said, whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. Clearly, you've seen this morning, we believe in public prayer. We believe it is good for the building up of the body, for helping us enter into worship. So this isn't about whether or not there's an audience to your prayer. What this is about is your heart. They did it to be seen by people. God wants your heart. When you come in prayer, he wants you to come honestly as you are. If you are sad, bring your grief to God. If you're full of joy, bring your joy to God. If you are troubled and worried, bring your worries to God. 
It is okay to enter reluctantly into prayer. It's okay to say at the end of the day, God, I have come to pray because I know it is good for me, I know it is what I should do, but I don't want to be here right now. God will honour that commitment to him and that honesty. And then thirdly, how to pray together. The Lord's Prayer is a corporate prayer. The language in it is corporate. Our Father, give us, forgive us, lead us, deliver us. It's clear that this doesn't mean you can never pray alone because it also says go into your room and shut the door. (laughs) So that's not what this is about, but it's about our prayer should be about the body of Christ. When we pray, we should be praying for each other. And when we have stuff we need prayer for, we should be taking it to others and saying, will you help me? Will you carry this burden to God in prayer with me? Also, one of the beautiful things about the Lord's Prayer is that it is a prayer that has been prayed through the generations. This is a global and eternal prayer. Let that sink in for a minute. Each time you pray the Lord's Prayer, you join with a chorus that is global and that is eternal. It has been prayed throughout eternity, this prayer. From the moment Jesus spoke it on onward, this prayer has been prayed. What a glorious gift to join with your brothers and sisters in praying this prayer. So keep it simple, keep it honest, and let's do it together. And then finally, what to pray. And I only have one for this, sorry, just the one. But it may not surprise you. What to pray, the Lord's Prayer. You know, gave away the lead, didn't we, with the title? Um, Augustine said, and I did say you'd be impressed with the breadth of the quotes today from Taylor Swift to Augustine. Um, But Augustine said, if you pray properly, you'll pray nothing but what is in the Lord's Prayer. If you look at the prayers of Jesus in the Bible, and unfortunately we don't have time this morning for me to reference them all, but you can draw a root from them back into the Lord's Prayer. You can reference them back. When we pray for healing, we're praying, let your kingdom come. When we pray for wars to end, we're praying, your will be done, God. When we're praying for provision for ourselves or for our brothers and sisters around the world, we're saying, give us this day our daily bread. When we are saying, God, I have messed up again, we're saying, forgive us, Lord. So things you should pray for, (laughs) anything that you can root back to the Lord's Prayer. And obviously, we have all had moments when we have been running late because of our own ineptability to get up in the mornings and get ready, and we have asked God for a parking space. I think that's a human prayer that has been uttered by, I suspect, everyone in this room who drives. Um, And so there's grace in this. I'm not trying to be hardcore or legalistic about this, but what I'm saying is if you are ever in debate, if you're ever thinking, should this be something that I come persistently in prayer to God about? The easy test of that is, can I root it in the Lord's Prayer? And I would love to challenge you guys, as we go into the week ahead, to find a spot, be it 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, whatever you can find in your week, and make it achievable. Maybe twice this week, maybe Tuesday and Thursday, or whatever's achievable for you. Find a physical place where you can go back to time and time again and pray the Lord's Prayer. And as you pray it, consider the invitation of God, consider the gift of Jesus in this prayer, that we can enter into prayer, partnering with our Father, coming as we are, to have conversation as Jesus did and as many of our brothers and sisters around the world and through time have, that we can join that chorus of prayer. And in the coming weeks, Keep revisiting that spot, that time, that place. And as each of our preachers unpacks a part of the Lord's Prayer, take what you have heard that Sunday and bring it into those moments of prayer with you. Really spend time once again treasuring the Lord's Prayer. This is a tool that we were given to change ourselves and to change this world. It is a gift from God. Don't let it become the beeping fire alarm that you've learned to ignore. So as we end now, guys, I would love us to pray the Lord's Prayer together. It's on the screen behind me. If you're able to stand, please stand. Let's be intentional and let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your sunny Sunday. So that is it. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've been blessed by what you've heard here today. If you'd like to find out more about who we are, what we do, what we believe, then please feel free to check out the website that is on the screen now. Or if you would like to get in contact with one of us, then feel free to email the address on screen and one of our team will get back to you. We'd love to have you join us at one of our in-person meetings if you're able to. We meet at 10 o'clock every single Sunday and you can join us either in Great Denham at the Community Hall or at our building on Dover Crescent in Putnam. So that's it. Thanks again and I hope to see you all really soon. Bye for now. Thanks for joining us. For more information, visit woodsidechurch.com or follow us on social media.